is Australia absolutely at their best. The perfect delivery. Aim at the top of off, hit the top of off, and the England captain is gone. First ball. It's not that delivery, is it? It's a big job. It's easy to get overawed, but I love it. You know, I jump out of bed in the morning when I think I can try to work towards a common goal, working together, so that part of the role doesn't scare me. Being the figurehead of Australian cricket for me is, as a kid was always the captain, so, yeah, that's the honour I've been given, and it's been really special just thinking back about those literally hundreds and hundreds of people that have helped me. It's not just the last few years that I've perhaps been vice captain or you know made the Aussie team. The type of captain I want to be that's been shaped over the last 28 years. Yeah, I had a great childhood. I'm one of five kids. The competitiveness definitely came from being part of a big family. Um, two older brothers. I remember as soon as I could walk, I was in the backyard chasing after them. No, there was no real sympathy given to Pat. I think he had to deal with, uh, with us from day one. I think he was six years younger than me and three years younger than Tim. Uh, backyard cricket was pretty intense, to say the least. Everything was a contest as a kid. Pat had probably the worst temper. I think he didn't like losing, probably because he did lose the most early on. Usually that's how it finished. Someone was spinning the dharma, usually Pat. Um, and then um, come about seven o'clock at night, and that's what well, usually finish off the game every afternoon. <laughs> when I was four years old, I used to go to preschool once a week, and a family friend was dropping me home, and um, she gave me five lollipops, one for me, and then four for each of my siblings. So first thing I did when I got home was I ran around, handed them out, and uh, my sister Laura was in the bathroom. For some reason, instead of waiting till she came out, I just opened the door a little creak and I was waving the lollipop through the door. The well, next thing she came and slammed the door and off came the top of my finger. Um, so literally clean off, had a little bit of bone sticking out and I just remember screaming my head off and running to mum. And yeah, went to the hospital, um, had surgery. It was apparently too small to, to sew back on. In the waiting room, mum was really worried that going to kindergarten next year None of the girls were going to want to hold my hand, you know, walking down um, at lunchtime. Well, Dad was really worried uh, about something else. He had a, a remote control and he was flicking it through his hands. And Mum said, oh, what are you doing? He goes, well, I've just got to make sure he can still bowl. So that was an hour after the accident. Dad, that's all Dad was worried about. I think because I, I was so young, I, I, I know nothing else. So I've always bowled with a shorter finger. He was playing Green Shield and scaring kids. I think even in, you know, high-level reps, he was, you know, had other parents coming up to mum and dad and telling them to slow down against his son, their sons and stuff. So uh, I think about, yeah, about 16, he kind of grown and realised he was pretty good. I did quite well in the Green Shield, which is under-16s, and then they, you know, selected the, the training squad for under-17s. And, yeah, I remember being chuffed to be part of that because it meant I got to train. At the SCG, occasionally you'd run into New South Wales players that were still there training overnight. We had a couple of coaches. I remember Brett Lee came to one session. When it came to selecting the team, I made the New South Wales side. Could be something special. Oh, that's close. It's given. Patrick Cummins, a young man, gets the breakthrough. I remember seeing this kid just like really skinny, but there's something, there was that look in his eye, and you know, you can just tell when someone's got that, that X factor about him. He bowled for the first time, I saw him, I thought, wow, this, this kid's something special. You know, you see some bowlers that are tall and they just put the ball there. You see some short bowlers that are skiddy and they get the ball to go through. But Pat Cummins had that really, that steep bounce, that trajectory off the wicket. And almost like it hit and took off like an aeroplane. Lockyer pops that up. Neville going back, should have a play at it and takes the catch. There's his first wicket, Patrick Cummins, a young man from Penrith. Personally, you know, you know that he's getting a really good wrist behind the ball, that beautiful flick of the wrist, and that seam was bowled upright. And he could swing the ball both ways, which uh, 
something that I wish I, you know, I could do. I never was able to swing the brand new ball both ways. He had that from the age of 17. Bird just blocking one over the top, but taken by Dave Warner. And Cummins has a third wicket. What about the story of the night, the 17-year-old? I used to catch a train in and out of uni most days. Um, and I remember I was catching the Western Line Central Station. My phone started to ring. It was an unknown number. I picked it up, and it was Andrew Hilditch to say, congratulations, you've received a Cricket Australia contract. I don't think it's a gamble. We think he's going to be real good. I just remember sitting on the train, trying not to squeal because there was people around, but thinking this is wild. I, you know, that, that Cricket Australia contract list had Ricky Ponting, Michael Clark, these legends of the game, and now I was, I was part of that squad of 20-odd people. Yeah, obviously, with, it was my first full-time job, so I remember thinking, OK, now I can go and buy myself a car. I don't have to go on the train every single day. I bought a second-hand Mazda 3, and I think I bought it on my birthday, which is May the 8th. How is your lineup today? Yeah, we're missing Shane Watson and Sean Marsh, both out injured, so hopefully they'll, be, they'll pull up OK for the second match. But it gives a, uh, a couple of debutants an opportunity. Young Pat Cummings comes in. Once I was picked for the Australian one-day side, at that stage, I'd only played two professional one-day games for New South Wales. I'd taken zero wickets, going about eight runs and over. So I remember being nervous going into that first game. Uh, Hashim Emel was facing a run in first ball. Set that beautifully. That is a very good shot indeed. That's over cover, over extra cover for six. That is class. And he hits me over cover for six. <laughs> I was kind of welcome, welcome to professional cricket, uh, welcome to international cricket. He's only a young kid um, at the time. He's very, very raw. He, he's very quiet, um, but he, ha he had something about him. He, he, he was the, the one thing I noticed on that tour, which is different for other kids, is, is he learnt really quick. That is a massive wicket. Cummings, the 18-year-old, has taken care of Jacques Cullis. That is a huge blow. You only had to tell him once. He, he went away, soaked it all in, but he learnt really, really quick. Yes. Yeah. He's gone. There's another one down. Cummins has picked up a couple of wickets again. He's such a talent, this man. It's a historic test match. He was just a nightmare. We, we lost the unlosable test match. In the tea break, we were one or two down, and me and a couple of the other 12ers went over to do a gym session just outside the ground, about 100 metres away. No window, no TV, no phones, and we just kept hearing this cheer every five minutes until we kind of worked out. That's about, we've heard about six or seven cheers here. Went and checked the score, and they were nine for 20 odd. Got out, and the mayhem continues. All out for 47. The South Africans will definitely have momentum. This is quite extraordinary. It was a really dark change room. Um, there was different groups uh, debriefing about what had happened. Um, and the only answer we had, we, we had to get back out and play as quick as we can. We flew off to Joburg for the second test match, pulled together in the change room um, day before the game. And Michael Clark, as captain, just said, all right, guys, there's two changes. Uh, Sean Marsh is out, Uzi's in. And uh, Rhino's injured. Pat, you're debuting. Yeah, didn't sleep super well. <laughs> Paddy coming in at that time was perfect. Because uh, he was so raw, he hadn't been exposed to all the media, and he was just playing cricket. He was playing the, the game he loves with his, with his brothers out in the backyard. And, and that we, we sort of fed off that as well. We, we needed something different going into that last test after the diabolical um, fall of, of Cape Town. So he, he was a perfect fall for us going into that last test and his performance were outstanding. Cummins, edged and caught. Ricky Ponting doesn't miss too many of those. Cummins has picked up his first wicket. Oopsie, oopsie, straight up in the air. And uh, Cummins, good comeback from him. Second 
and slip. Once again, Cummins gets a little bit of shape. Cummins. Yeah. He's got him first ball. Brilliant stuff from Patrick Cummins. This is sensational. He has got five now. Absolutely magnificent stuff from the teenager. He's nicked that one. That's it. Brilliant stuff from Cummins. Absolutely sensational performance from the youngster. He's picked up six for 79. So that is uh, just outstanding. And South Africa lead by 309. I remember getting out just, and we need a couple more runs. Oh, has he gone? Yes, he has! Oh, is there another twist in the tail here? Nathan Lyon was in the corner as he does rocking backwards and forwards, dry reaching, and Pat's sort of going, what's wrong? Just, let's just bat. Like, it's what, what's happening out here? It's just a, just a game of cricket. That first test match, there's no way I'd bat like that now. Patrick Cummins, just 18 years old. He got six for in the test, now trying to get Australia over the line. I was so naive. 13 required by Australia to win this test match. That's a good shot. Him all calls down his get up and make sure that Pat Cummins is on strike for the next over. I mean, in all the junior cricket, I always kind of batted and bowled as much as I could. It's probably when I started playing Men's cricket, kind of when I was 15 or 16, that I was mainly a bowler, so I'd bat at number 10 or 11, and yeah, we've been trying to catch up since. Australian dressing room, plenty of nerves there. They need this one to draw the series. I think I was trying to hit Dale Stain back over his head. He's bowling 145 kilometre outswingers. In the air, oh, it's put him down! Goodness me! Dale Stain just in his follow through, couldn't hang on to this one. Michael Clark in the change room. Nothing you can do from there. Three needed now for a tie, four for a win. It's a funny thing, cricket. You're so nervous waiting to come into bat or to bowl, but once you're actually in the moment, you're in control. So if anything bad happens, at least you feel like you had some kind of say in it. The match is on a knife edge. The temptation will be there to have a crack for Pat Cummins. Yeah. A big shot and he's got it away. He's got it away. How about that? Superb stuff. They finally get over the line. A fantastic test match between two titanic sides. Yeah, I guess one of the benefits of being 18 years old and pretty fearless. There was relief. There was excitement in the air. And Paddy was, oh, it's this game of cricket, boys. It was, it was just perfect for the Australian cricket team at the time. On debut at 18 years of age, it is Patrick Cummins. What a game for you. It's a game you're going to remember for a long, long time. Yeah, definitely. A, a, uh, just to get a test match is unbelievable. And obviously a, a great win like today. Um, you know, we came from behind and, you know, just tops it off. Even till today, that's probably the best, you know, test match memory I have. After South Africa, the next six years were on and off. Lots of ups and downs in cricket. Brilliant stuff from Cummins. Absolutely sensational performance from the youngster on debut. So during that first test match, I smashed the fat pad in my front uh, heel and had a stress fracture in my heel bone. As a fast bowler, it's normally back injuries. So I had, I think, four or five different stress fractures. A stress fracture is just repetition time after time after time until the bone's just under so much stress that it starts to fracture. So as a fast bowler, if if you've got a really twisty action, um, a certain part of your back might be copying the, the brunt of that, that force. There's a couple of times where I was out in the field after a spell and suddenly I just went to redo my shoelaces or someone chucked me a ball and I just remember thinking, oh, there's a knife in my back. I think the most frustrating thing was I'd been able to play a World Cup, but it was only T20 cricket. And I just remember thinking, my body can't even get through four overs in a game. How do I expect it to, to play test matches? It was just the perpetual question of, oh, how's your back? Are you injured? Are you going to play this summer? When's your next tour? When's your next game? And I just remember for years, I was like, I oh, don't know, really. Pretty unexpected. Uh, I came back from South Africa and I felt pretty good and just thought it was a precautionary scan and 
unfortunately found something. Cummins has been ruled out of all cricket this summer due to stress fractures in his back. So everything's going fine, but it's uh, yeah, it's going to take another you know, couple of months at least. Meanwhile, fast bowler Pat Cummins is expected to miss the Australian summer for a second straight year. Yeah, I'm not playing the IPL this year to try and get back to playing red ball cricket. And you don't look injured, it's not like you're on crutches or anything, you, you look perfectly fine. It's kind of a hard one to explain to people. I've got this tiny little crack in my back and I'm going to miss the next nine months. It's not really stiff, there's no really acute pain, so um, yeah, I don't really feel that injured, but unfortunately there's something there. I tried a lot of different things. I think I got to a stage where I just wanted to try something different. And with speaking to a few people, I said, you know, who's the best bowling coach you've ever worked with? Just about everyone said, well, DK Lilly. Lily in to bowl the last ball of the day. He's bowling! He's bowling! The last ball of the day, Lily's bowling out for Richards. Oh, and that's a good delivery, man. That's a lot of Dennis Lilly. Oh, what a great bowler he is, Dennis Lilly. I think he probably wondered what happened when he fronted up there and, you know, saw me stand there, skinny legs and a pair of shorts and, uh, you know, four days growth um, and then expecting me to help, help him solve a problem that was, you know, would really ruin his career. I mean, I was desperate. I, I wouldn't have wanted to not have a career and think, oh, there was a few options to me that I didn't try. Someone once said years ago, and they were talking about baseball and pitching and baseball, and they said it's the mo one of the most unnatural actions in, in sport. And then someone quickly popped up and said, what about running in at 25, 30 metres and, and, and then jumping up and landing 11 times your body weight uh, on one foot and about 9 or 10 on the other, then hurling the ball down like a baseballer, basically. Mmm, hadn't thought about that. Yeah, it, it's, it's traumatic um, on your body. It's just his mindset and the way he thought about bowling, I loved. He'd been through it all before. Yeah, I'd been told that I'd never bowl again and, uh, you know, that I certainly wouldn't, uh, wouldn't play for Australia again, whereas I'm not sure Pat had been told that. I think when I saw DK, I was at a time where I thought, OK, I'm now 22 years old or 21 years old. I'm a worse bowler now than I was at 18. And he was the one that, after a few sessions, I thought, OK, no, it's still there inside of me. We just got to unlock it again. Most of the problems are caused early on and, in fact, often start with a run-up or something you do in your run-up. That starts a chain reaction for everything else going wrong. In my jump and kind of release, I was twisting big. I was putting huge tension on my back, um, kind of hips, back, legs. Everything was taking the, the huge force that, that happens every ball. So. You work backwards from my run-up. I had really rocky shoulders, I still do, but hopefully not as bad as, as it was. Um, but my shoulders rock up and down. I'm quite pigeon-toed. My arms swing right across my body instead of you know up and down like a sprinter. So it's all wasted energy. It's all my body twisting in different directions that it shouldn't have to. And what that results in is once I hit the crease and I do my big jump up, my front leg's kicking all the way out down to the leg side, my shoulders are twisting with it, and then suddenly that's all got to twist back as I release the ball. Doesn't necessarily create any more pace, certainly doesn't help with you know, my seam and swinging the ball, and it certainly puts a lot more stress on my body. So we just try to work back from that and find little cues that reduce some of that stress. DK, straight away when I started working with him, just a couple of pointers, I felt like a better bowler. Pat took to it like a duck to water. Pat was so determined and uh, each day he sort of fronted up and showed me how much he'd advanced and how much, you know, he was enjoying bowling with a freer action. Well, it's a nice, pleasant morning here in Ranchi and a historic occasion. First ever test match at this venue. I, I still had huge doubts in my mind that my body was right for test cricket. Everything to play for, series level. Yeah, absolutely. It's an exciting time halfway through, so, yeah, it makes for a good series, and uh, hopefully we can play well in this one. I hadn't bowled a lot. Um, I hadn't played too much first-class cricket at all. 
Patrick Cummins comes back in for his first game in a while and, and Glenn Maxwell as well. And I remember getting ready for, for the test match and just thinking, well, this is where I've been desperate to get back to. I'm here now. Let's rip in. Yeah, had a, a long time out of the game, didn't he? Um, from 2011, I think, to, to 2017. And we saw the impact that he could have straight away um, in the test match in Ranchi. It's been a long time between bowling at this level for Pat Cummins. Oh, nasty delivery. Really let the batsman know that you make half a mistake, we're here to take 20 wickets. The hostile approach that he, um, he came with was um, pretty special. We knew straight away that it's good to have this guy back. Yeah. Yeah. The finger goes up. Yeah. On straight to the fielder. That's Virat Kohli. Yeah. And Pat Cummins is the bowler for Australia. Yeah, and the wicket happened to be one of the flattest wickets ever. Yeah. That's gone. Cummins once again proving to be the strike bowler. Yeah, felt like I belonged straight away. Felt like I didn't take long before I said, all right, you're here now. What can you do to try and win this match? That's a very confident appeal. Out is the decision. Fourth wicket for Patrick Cummins, a nasty delivery. The pace, I think, of Pat Cummins, he's been out of the game for a long, long time now. It's been about five or six years since he played his last test, but he came in and bowled with absolute aggression, picked up four for 59, so he's right back in the mix of, you know, being Australia's uh, spearhead. off with all right even on my worst day what can I do well for me I think okay I'm going to run in and I'm going to hit the top of off stump and hopefully I've got a bit of energy on the ball and it's got a little bit of bounce a little bit of pace and that's what my worst day looks like and I think okay if I'm feeling good maybe I can try and bowl a little bit faster maybe I can try and swing the ball a little bit so I kind of go through this checklist of steps and build up within a test match or within a spell to the point where you've kind of earned the right or I've earned the right to start really getting creative and thinking about different fields and different deliveries that I want to try. Go on! Back Cummings with another. He is on fire. Okay, so that's the zone, the sweet spot where everything's just just happens and you don't really think about it. It's just you're just in this zen kind of or flow state that people call it and you just know how the ball's coming out, what the batter's going to do to that ball and you're planning four or five balls ahead of time. As a kid, the best part of cricket was playing with your mates every weekend, um, and it's the same now. Uh, probably even more so, like, we spend nine, ten months of the year on the road, so that's a lot of dinners and breakfast sitting next to someone if you don't like them, but, um, you know, the test side's brilliant. We all get along, have a, have a big laugh. Proper pin-up boy, probably probably the best pin-up boy Cricket Australia could probably have, but he is always cheating himself out. He's very intelligent and he, he, he plays on that a fair bit. Yeah, no, he, he's, a, he's a good fella, one of, one of my good mates. The bowling unit's very tight. He's OK to get on with? Yeah, <laughs> he's um, probably a bit smart for us, a bit smart for the quicks, but no, he's been fantastic since coming in and um, had another dimension to our attack, so that's great. Uh, yeah, I love bowling in, in tandem with, with Paddy. Um, obviously, when, when he's got the hand, ball in hand, your, your role as a bowler, especially the spinner, tends to change a fair bit because the quality of bowler he is, he is the best in the world. And so my role tends to change a fair bit when, when I'm bowling with him. Obviously, my keys are you know, accuracy, bounce, those type of things. And he's, he's a little bit shorter than me. Um, he's probably a little bit quicker than me on the, on the speed gun. Um, he's probably just as accurate almost. I think it's just he bowls those wicket-taking balls. Uh, bowling those balls, you know, they come up 140, 139, and then all of a sudden one will just hit the wicket and just 
take off and that's what gets the nick or that's what gets the glove to the keeper or so he's a big wicket taker and yeah it's a hell of a skill Welcome back to the middle of the Gabba, all in readiness for the toss in this, the first test of the Vodafone Ashes series. And I'm joined in the middle. Trying to bring the team together and hoping that continues.